Hello, and welcome to the Jim Ruff Show. Uh, today I'm here with my friend and uh, almost constant companion, <laughs> uh, Paul Everett, who's driven up from Shelton, Washington. And Paul and I have done about four or five shows together. And this is kind of a culmination show, really, about, uh, about the Wisdom Council and society's breakthrough. And uh, one of the, th we've named it, I've named it the, uh, is this the Holy Grail is the name of the show. And the reason why I thought I'd explain that to you, Paul, why that's the name of the show, was that I was, was thinking, it was, um, you know, if, what would happen if you discovered the Holy Grail? I mean, what, what would be the difference? Would, you, would it be that people would start liking one another and they'd start working together and they'd start, all of a sudden, big problems that we face would start getting solved and there'd be like peace on earth and, and people would start realizing more of their potential and things like that. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that's kind of thing is what would happen. And, I, yeah, I think I found something that can do that. This is kind of my feeling. Uh -huh. And you and I have been talking, of course, so, um, and I wanted to give you a chance to share a little bit about what you've experienced in our, in our visits together. Well, you have to remember that the grail is never found. <laughs> <laughs> By definition. By definition, yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, uh, it's interesting that you should bring up peace, in the, uh, peace and so forth in the world because I've been having an extensive conversation online with a number of people about that issue and, and what it would take to uh, create a peaceful world because, after all, who likes war? I mean, everybody says they're against violence and they're against war and yet we have it we have it in spades all over the place so something isn't uh, for some reason or another we have this and uh, my wife Joelle and I have been talking about this rather extensively and one of the thoughts that we've had is we have it because others and we will not allow others to be different from us and that would be okay. So uh, as, I, as you've just provoked me just now to think of, how would the Wisdom Council change that fundamental issue? I want to restate it, okay. which is that, um, let's make it really difficult, okay? And we'll not use the Muslim issue, we'll use the Northern Ireland issue, which is still not resolved. How would the Wisdom Council help resolve the ability of the Protestant Northern Irelanders and the Catholic Northern Irelanders, both Irish, to live together in uh, rel at least relative peace, at least people not being killed? Right. Well, the. the w that's a real challenge. I, you know, that's probably harder than I should give you. No, 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 no. I, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's a slam dunk. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Okay, we got to send you over there. I want all you listeners to, to funnel some money into Jim so he can fly to Northern Ireland and slam dunk this. Well, I, I don't think it's about me. I think it's about like no, like I understand. About the, it's the, not wisdom about you. the wisdom council. If and and there is a wisdom council in Ireland right now and uh, being experimented with in a. In in a, in a pharmaceutical company. Ireland. In Ireland. Not yeah. Northern not, Ireland. Not Ireland. You're, okay. Yes, correct. Yeah, we Thank you. Uh, but the, um, so there are some experiments bubbling up and no, actually no wisdom council has ever been in done really, uh, not in, with all 12 principles a part of it. But the, the fundamental thing, Paul, is that um, the, the process of talking and thinking needs to change to be a process where we celebrate differences. We now have instituted a process of talking and thinking where we do not celebrate differences, where we try and mute those differences, where, we, where if somebody's different, that's bad. We compromise. Yeah, and, and we have a conversation to maybe compromise, mm -hmm. but that's really a lose-lose. Nobody quite gets what they want and that sort of thing. Right, in fact, that, it's stronger than that. Both parties lose their integrity in a compromise. Yes. So what the Wisdom Council does is it fundamentally changes that basic conversation. 
It fundamentally changes it to a conversation where we're seeking breakthroughs. And when you're seeking breakthroughs, it's an asset to have difference. When you're all the same, it's really hard to have a breakthrough. But when there's difference, and you're in this other kind of conversation, it's like, oh good, where there's difference, now we have this possibility of a breakthrough. And to me, it's the, the point of the Wisdom Council is that fundamental shift of quality of conversation. And I mean, I really didn't understand this myself when I st started proposing the, the Wisdom Council. I didn't understand how important dynamic facilitation was to that process. To that process. Now yeah. I realize, I just assumed it was however you got consensus, that would be key, that would be great. Yeah. Now I realize that's not right. That it really requires a consensus or a co-sensing of everybody in this other kind of conversation which dynamic facilitation engenders. Mm -hmm. The point of, so the Wisdom Council uses a small group conversation that's choice creating, I call it choice creating, with the dynamic facilitator and that is structured to be resonant to the whole system. And as soon as the, see because the, the way this works, I think, this is my sense of it, the reason why we have war in my mind is because people have cut off their caring. In other words, what we've, when something comes along that we care about, that we can't quite deal with, we go, oh, I won't let that bother me. Or if, if Okay, uh, uh, needs to be a clarification yeah. there. The thing that came along that I cared about bothered me. Yes. Is that right? Right. So it was something that I did not want. That's right. Particularly. Or, or yes. Yeah. yeah, okay, so I, I wanted to clarify that. Right, because something that comes along. Clear. Something you know, and if for kids that get traumatized, for instance, or, right. or, or if you're in, I mean, one of my favorite examples is in the, uh, when we were thinking of going into this desert storm when the U.S. Mm -hmm. went in there, and mm -hmm. they kept talking about the Republican guard that Saddam Hussein had that yep. was battle-hardened right. versus the Americans. So, and because they were battle-hardened, they were so much more powerful fighting force. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? That just means that they have cut off their feelings so that they can, if they're, the guy next to them is somehow killed, it doesn't bother them, they just go forward anyway. Mm -hmm. That's what bottle hardened means. Mm -hmm. And we're all bottle, battle hardened in some degree. We all get into this place where we go, oh, okay, well I'll just stop letting that bother me. I won't let it bother me anymore. I'll go into denial about mm -hmm. that. And if that builds up and we end up with a, some kind of theory of reality that we're holding on to that's really protecting us from all those pains that we've had and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so I got my theory, which is maybe the one faith, faith A, mm -hmm. and then somebody else has their theory, which is faith B. Well, it's very scary to me to have somebody challenge my faith, that faith. Mm -hmm. So I am willing to go to war and fight for it, mm -hmm. to stop it. Mm -hmm. And it's not a genuine faith. A genuine faith is is this quality of being in relationship to God and being in relationship to others and, and being open. It's not a closed thing. Some people define faith as what I would call closed-mindedness. Mm -hmm. They say, I'm going to believe this regardless of whatever evidence comes along. Mm -hmm. So it's like a def uh, you know, that, that's Unfortunately, we have a lot of that these days. We have a lot of that, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's like that, to me, so, that's not what... So how then is the Wisdom Council going to change that mindset? See, yes. That's the part that I have the most difficulty with. That's great, with great question. Because yes. I don't think that kind of a mind sh shift occurs without uh, either uh, enlightenment, what I, what I call consciousness, yeah. or trauma of such huge proportions that it, simply uh, breaks down all of your faith barriers, so to speak, yes. and just crashes in on you. Yes. Well, let me change the word from trauma to crisis. Crisis. Okay. That's okay. a good one. Cri there is a, that is one of the things that can break through, is mm -hmm. that sense of crisis, like, oh, my, nothing is working. I have to open my mind to get out of this mess. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden I'm an open-minded person and I'm in relationship to people. And so we have these weird situations where 
people, you talk to veterans of World War II, for instance, and the best time of their life, the most meaningful time of their life, was when they were fighting this war, which where they hated to be, they hated mm -hmm. to be doing what they're doing, but somehow they were in a crisis situation and they, they became into relationship with others and in with life in some way that they, they didn't know about. Well, they were facing death. They were facing death. I mean, we don't think that we face death, but we do, just like our friend George, who, who had that terrible stroke, you know. Yes, right. So we face it every moment. We just don't, there, there's a denial, if you want to see denial. Right. That's a good one. That's, well, let's see, that's exactly what the Wisdom Council does, is that it, it takes that crisis possibility mm -hmm. of transformation, mm -hmm. and it brings it into play in exactly the way you've described it. So the, what happens in the Wisdom Council is you gather a random selection of people, and the facilitator stands and says, what are some of the issues we might talk about? And mm -hmm. people raise these crisis issues. Mm -hmm. It's like, not like the crises, we have crises all around, it's just that we're not paying attention to but them. One of the crisis issues that would arise in Northern Ireland is we Protestants do not want to have these counties joined to Catholic Ireland. Yes, yes. But that would be if you had a random selection of people, chances are you'd get a Catholic too. Absolutely. And, and so you'd have somebody with a different point of view. Right, and he and, or she would say, well, we don't want to not be joined. Right, so, but then that starts, that is a crisis then, because you have these differing views, That's right? That's right. So now you begin this different kind of conversation, mm -hmm. this choice creating conversation instead of the normal back and forth conversation, mm -hmm. where you're looking for a breakthrough. And I can't say ahead of time what that breakthrough would be. I don't even well, know no, the issue that we well. We wouldn't know. But what would happen is that the, the dynamic facilitator, by his or her presence, can engender this choice-creating conversation. And if they last long enough, the group will have shifts. They'll have shifts and, and, and breakthroughs, possibly, where at some point they all know <laughs> what they do agree to, and they got there by a breakthrough process. And so they, they will look at one another at the end, and this has happened in every Wisdom Council, is people look at one another and go, this was fun, this is great, this is a great okay. group of people. And it just changes the whole dynamic of how people talk. That provokes a whole stream of thought in me. <laughs> so now, you really keyed on to something that I think is a, a difficulty in my mind. And, I, and there's actually three streams that immediately occurred when you brought that up. Let's see. Let's take one of them, just one of them. How is it, I'm going to shift to the United States for a minute and out of the Northern Ireland thing. Just, um, I want to go back to that because maybe we should stay there for a minute. I'm sorry. Maybe okay. we should just stay there a minute. The question that I, that was provoked in me by what you said was, well, yeah, okay, we've got this group of 12, 14, 16 people. Let's say 12, yeah. 12, okay. And they all love each other now. Not necessarily. They all are very excited about the place to which they've come. Yes. Which is some kind of a breakthrough agreement that resolves something yes. about and, that and issue. And the other piece is that they're, the fact that the others have different views is seen as an asset. Right, I understand that. All okay. right, now, but this is just a small group. How does that change Sinn Féin and the radical Protestants of Northern Ireland who weren't in the group? Right, right. Well, see, that's the, that's the point of the, the Wisdom Council. There's like 12 features, and a, most of the features are about linking that small group to the whole system. So, like one of them, for Because, instance. remember, it's random choice. I mean, you can't pick the prime minister over here. No, no, you and, don't want uh, them. Yeah. something. Get these two guys. No, you and don't want that. Two something else's and no, two something else's. This is far more powerful than that. Yeah. That's, okay. a, that's not a powerful process. Uh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> this that's is far more powerful because what you're doing here is you're everybody in the, the way it would work ideally is everybody in the whole country would know this was going to happen. Hmm. And everybody, would they see it while it was happening? No, they wouldn't. Have, well, let me keep going. Okay. And everybody would have a number. Everybody would get a number. So, and know they would part of this. Mm -hmm. And everybody would know that they had chartered it. In other words, they had said at some point, yes, this is a good thing. This is we the people. This group will speak for me. 
Okay. At some point, they, they would say that. Maybe not right away. See, right away, they have no way to say that. But if the Wisdom Council gains in momentum, then at some point, they're part of it and they say that. So I've got a number and you've got a number. A number? A uh, phone a, number? Or no, something? just a, a, if there's six a, million I'm, people in Northern I'm, Ireland. I'm number six million. And you're, no, you're number six million and I'm six million and one, okay? Okay. And then we're going to have a bouncing ball lottery and we're going to pick who these people are. And it's yeah. going to be on, on TV and so yeah. forth. And those people, it's a little bit like a, rea like a reality TV show. You know? <laughs> and so the people get selected. And there's a little fanfare around that those yeah. people now are gathered in a room and cloistered, and they are we the people. But they go behind the screen. They so go to behind speak. the screen. Right. Because and and there's reasons for that that sure. I, we don't have time to go into. But and then they will come out in two or three days mm -hmm. with unanimous statements. Mm -hmm. Same way that the Constitution only it was two or three months. Exactly. Yeah. Four okay. months almost. Four months. Three or yeah. four months. And. And so they would exactly w the similar. And so they come out and they make a unanimous statement, statement that we're waiting for. We're interested because I was part of this thing and I know about it. I'm, I'm wondering what the heck they're going to say. And so when they speak, what you and I have both been invited to churches or tavern's going to have it mm -hmm, on TV. Mm -hmm, we're going to mm -hmm. all talk about it at this tavern, or we're going to mm -hmm. talk about it here and there. So presumably we'd watch it with other people. We don't have to, mm -hmm. but the chance is that we could watch it with other people. And then they have a 25, 30 minute presentation and they share their experience of how they got there. And you see these people that they like one another and mm -hmm, things mm -hmm, happen. Mm -hmm. And then we turn our chairs and we talk. Now, now we may be, we're the Catholics in the Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. so we're meeting and we're saying, well, what do we think of this? Well, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we would have a chance to type in our response to, mm -hmm. the, to the, this response. We could respond to it through a website mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or our group mm -hmm. response. Mm -hmm. And in the website, we could look and see what other people are thinking mm -hmm. and saying. Mm -hmm. And usually what happens is 80, 90% of the people are in agreement. Because this is a random selection group that reaches unanimous statements, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to imagine they would. I mean, they'll go just go a little too fast maybe for me, but they're coming to a place that I, I maybe could go to too. Mm -hmm. And so all of us are kind of in sort of agreement at this point, but mm -hmm. maybe you or I have some information that they don't know about that really would queer that whole thing. So we immediately write letters to the editor of the paper and call up the TV station and say, hey, they don't know about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the TV is very interested because 80, 90 percent of the people mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. curious and they want to know, hey, if somebody disagrees. So they run over to you so, so, and find out what, what is this piece of information that's necessary. So, so even though that small group is the only one selected, somehow now you're on stage and you're getting your voice heard. Mm -hmm. So it's really a conversation of all six and a half million of us or however many there are and and so and we're talking again and in three months we have another random selection of people one of whom probably heard your talk or or heard your argument anyway and and has factored that in uh, mm -hmm. to what's happening so so it really is a conversation it really does change the conversation of of the whole system Plus, if I'm a politician watching all this and I'm realizing, ooh, the winds are blowing this way now, I'm, mm -hmm. I jump out in front and I say, this is the direction I've been going all along. I, I want there to be this piece also. And so now I don't, no. if I'm Sinn Fein or whatever, I don't have to feel this urge to be adversarial. I don't have to be, like you and I are familiar mm -hmm. with the union mm -hmm. leader that jumps up in front and has this right. adversarial pose. I don't have to have that adversarial pose anymore because the, the whole system is moving in a different direction. Okay, now I was smiling because um, you were saying the politician sees this and says, I better get out in front of them because I'm their leader. <laughs> <laughs> that reminded me of that old joke, you know. Uh, <laughs> but in the United, I'm going to shift to the United States now because before yeah. I was going to do that, but I yeah. decided we better do it here is um, in the United States, one of the, shall we say, great difficulties, and Dave Ross brought this up on his show after he came back from being a politician. He said that he spent 
hours and hours and hours every day calling people, raising money. Yeah. And so uh, the, the core question then begins to arise for me. Now we've had this wisdom council, a nationwide wisdom council. Right. And they've come up with thus and so about Social Security, we'll say. Right. Okay. But there's very powerful interests who have given a lot of money to that congressman who don't, who's, uh, who if the Wisdom Council's outcome is implemented, will lose. Yeah. What do we do? Well, you see the answer, don't you? No. Really? Another Wisdom Council? No, no, no. no. The, the, no, I don't, see, because I see, think the, that's very this, powerful. Those. Yeah, but the, this actually begins to take over a different level of authority. In other words, right now there's, there's only the people, and we can vote and come up with a majority, and we can unelect somebody or elect somebody or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and they sort of somehow think they're in charge. Mm -hmm. But actually, what's in charge is the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And actually what's really in charge is something that isn't there right now. And that's you and me and we the people. That's, there should be a we the people above the Constitution that's really in charge. And it's missing. What, this is be, what we're beginning to create is that we the people that's really in charge. So the only reason why we have this other problem all, at all is because that spot is now empty. There's no we the people. The system is on automatic pilot, which means Essentially, they've created a we the corporations that are in charge, mm. and that, that money is in charge. And so what is, begins to happen is we're unraveling that because we're creating a we the people that's legitimate, that's all of us, that can vote anybody out of office if they wanted to, but, mm -hmm. but it's like I think before it came to that, people would realize, hey, we're not in that old game anymore. We don't have to do that money game anymore. We, we have a new sense of leadership about where we're going. And uh, anybody, who, uh, anybody who went against that would be unelected for sure. So uh, I've got a different game going on here. I don't have to play that money game, at least to the extent. I mean, I'm sure that... They still have to play it in order to get heard. Right. If I, get, if I want to get elected, I have to get enough money to right. access things. But see, like if I'm a Wisdom Council member, one of the ideas I might come up with is why don't we why don't we set up a system of bringing up people that are really competent to stand for election? And why don't we have a different election process that has, um, uh, where it isn't just the f majority rule type thing. We have some kind of uh, second tiers of voting or, or where my second choice, maybe we vote first choice, second choice, third choice, and my second choice, third choice gets counted. Or, mm -hmm. In other words, we don't have to stay with this other system that we've got once we have a we the people that can structure things and all of us can say, yeah, that's a better way to do things. Let's mm -hmm. do that. Right now we can't make those leaps because the system is so tied up and tied bound and, and we all are in this uh, childish position of bowing to the fathers that founded it and not allowing ourselves to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So the Wisdom Council is a, is a structural device that allows us to be, come into adulthood as a society, really. Well, I wish I believed that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, you've heard lots of this stuff. Right, right, right. So why? What, what, do you, what would you need to be able to get pumped and get moving on, the, you know, to, to, be, to embrace this in some way? I mean, I, not everybody, nobody's embraced this yeah. really that, but very few, but so yeah, I don't want to put that much pressure Lightning on Lightning on the road to Tarsus? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, because right. it really does take that. It, to me, it's like, yeah. it hit me like that, like sure. a ton of bricks, and my God, this, was, this is the Holy Grail. Mm -hmm. So now the problem isn't so much finding it, it's about telling people about it in a way they can hear. You know, Jim, that's very... Uh, tough. As much as I have studied this with you and talked about it and everything, I'm still skeptical that it will do what you think it will do. And I guess um, it's sort of like uh, we could, uh, how about starting small by taking on a uh, some kind of a political because it, 
it's going to be all politics. I mean, there's no doubt about that, 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 that we get things done through the political process and you're advocating changing basically that political process to have a we the people up over the constitution and the constitution flows down into the chambers and, and but the chambers are hearing it from here instead of from here right yeah that's mm -hmm. the yeah the okay. secret is though that i'm not threatening any of that right we've right. got all that it's in place yeah. i'm not even okay. trying to convince everybody but you Just see what what would yeah. what would do that would be to see a place like say uh, the city of Olympia not the not not the government of the state of Washington and Olympia okay. but the city of Olympia sure. operate in this manner yes and then that would put your hypotheses about what happens to a large population yes when this happens to the test to the test yes well let me tell you what we are doing okay because we have a committee. Well, I know you have, you have uh, a couple of what I call small experiments happening in Rogue Valley, in Oregon. Yeah, that one was that one's sort of it's still happening, but it doesn't have the energy, energy right now. The, it. The, it, it is actually still underway, but it's kind of there aren't wisdom councils happening right now. The one wisdom council happened, and that energy is shot off in another direction right now. But the main thing that's happening is we've come to the same conclusion. We need to have a trial of this in a city. A genuine city. A genuine city. And we need to have researchers watching the whole way mm. and paying attention. So we have a committee in Portland who is writing a proposals and writing uh, to to uh, try and get grants to foundations do to and foundations so forth. to mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. right, and we have researchers who are very interested in being uh, watching this mm -hmm. process. We have one from the um, Kennedy School of Government mm -hmm. in uh, Massachusetts. Carol Chetkovich is mm -hmm. very much interested in it, and she's been to my seminar. She's a professor there, mm -hmm. and we have a professor at Portland State, mm -hmm. uh, Todd Sloan, who's mm -hmm. wanting to be involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, he's not at Portland State. We have somebody at Portland State and we have mm -hmm. Todd Sloan who is at somewhere else. So um, we have researchers, we don't have money. Mm -hmm. We have a, a excited group of people trying to do this experiment. We also mm -hmm. have a group similarly interested in San, uh, Oakland area. Mm -hmm. And their next step is to bring me down to do mm -hmm. a seminar down in that area. Well, have, but in the <coughs> Portland thing, are any of the Portland politically important people involved? No, but it doesn't, no. it almost doesn't matter. The, oh. It really doesn't matter. I, I've, we've only got a, just a few minutes. I mean, okay. we, only, we only have less than a minute. Less than a minute. <laughs> so, but, but the, 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 it's almost better, except that if somebody's politically important is involved, then we have media attention guaranteed. Yeah. It's really about media attention is what we need. Yeah. So it, it isn't a government thing. So it's really separate from that. Okay. So we need to go. I'm but sure the guy you. who came up, Paul, thank you very much. <laughs> that and, was uh, fun. Okay, great. Appreciate it. Really.